Hey guys, what's going on? Jeb here, and in today's video, we're going to be doing a little bit of technical analysis on Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency markets, and more specifically, we're going to be doing a little bit of longer-term technical analysis, and we're going to be talking about whether or not Bitcoin is ever going to once again fall below the support level that is $3,000. This is an extremely important question that we have an accurate answer to, because it has a very, very big role to play in all of our technical analysis moving on into the future here on Bitcoin. If Bitcoin does fall below $3,000, that changes a lot. So in today's video, we're going to be trying to find out if Bitcoin is going to break below $3,000. And we're also going to be talking about why the answer might unfortunately be yes. We're going to be talking about all of that and more in today's video. So if you enjoyed today's video, definitely consider dropping a like, hitting that subscribe button, and smashing the notification bell. Guys, we do cryptocurrency videos every single day here, and your support does mean a whole lot. So definitely consider doing that. But now, without much further ado... Let's go ahead and get right into it. Now, we're not going to do a whole lot of short-term technical analysis in today's video. Once I'm, once I'm done kind of doing the more longer-term stuff that I want to talk about here over the next couple of days, then we'll get back into it. There's not a whole lot going on to really talk about on the hourly chart. We saw Bitcoin try and establish a breakout above this falling wedge, but since we didn't really see a lot of volume come in, as you can see, we didn't see a lot of volume come in to confirm the breakout. We can actually just redraw this downtrend like that, and we can say that Bitcoin is still in this falling wedge. Now, I still think that there's a decent chance that we're going to break a bullish out of it and have a little bit of bullish exuberance come into the market. But nevertheless, we'll see what happens with that in due time. At the moment, Bitcoin is trading around $3,412. Let's go ahead and do the crypto market recap and then we'll dive into the main point of today's video. That being deciphering whether or not Bitcoin is going to fall below $3,000. In today's video, anyway, Bitcoin's down by about 0.75%. Nothing really to write home about here on Coin Market Cap, so this will be brief. Maker is in the double digit green, is making some big gains, pun absolutely intended. And we have about 80 cryptocurrencies in the red, two double digit losers in Revan and Aurora. Anyway, that was basically all we wanted to talk about in Coin Market Cap because we have a lot to talk about on the daily and the weekly chart for today's video, for today's long term technical analysis. Now, if you haven't already watched yesterday's video about why there's probably a bull market going to be starting in the next year or so, I talk about in that video a lot of the things I'm going to be discussing in this video. And I'm going to restate some of the things I said in that video to lay the foundation for the topic that we're talking about in today's video. I do recommend you go back and watch that video. I'll put a card up here in the top right. You can watch that video. It has a lot of the things that it, it's a it's a good starting point for what we're going to be discussing here today. Anyway, the first thing that I want to talk about is why $3,000 is such an important level and why it would be so bad if we went below it. Now, it's not going to be the end of the world if we go below it. It would just extend the bear market a little bit. And by a little bit, I mean maybe up to six months or so. But let's go ahead and talk about why it's so important. The first reason why it's so important is because $3,000 is one, of course, a psychological level. There's a three followed by three zeros. That means that it is a big even. Every single one of these out here on the daily chart, all of these $1,000 levels, 20000 19000 18000 4000 11000 14000 all of those are what I like to call big evens. They're psychological levels. They have three zeros in them, and typically the market will trade around them. There's a reason why Bitcoin once bounced off of resistance here at $3,000, then bounced off of resistance here at eight, uh, at $5,000, then once again at $8,000, then once again at $20,000. These longer-term movements almost always tend to bounce around large, big evens. We saw a similar thing happen here if we go back on the Bitfinex chart, back to the 2013 bull market where we saw Bitcoin top out around $1,200. That was a smaller big even, but it was nevertheless some form of big even. It's important, $3,000 is important in that right, but $3,000 is also important because it was previous market uh, support and resistance back over here in 2017. We saw Bitcoin run up here and test it as a level of resistance right here, and then we broke through it going on a rally, and then we came back down and tested it as a level of support. This was a very pretty market. I remember experiencing this market. I was back here during this. It was a very interesting market to trade and really a good place for a lot of uh, technical analysis to be taught, which is why I use this part of the market in the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy, for example, quite a lot. But the point of today's video here is that $3,000 based on price action back here in between May to about October of 2017, uh, that is a good way to establish a level of resistance is by having a lot of support and resistance up, uh, around that level. So... Let's dive into the question. Is Bitcoin going to break below $3,000? Well, if you look at yesterday's video, you will notice that in that video, I was talking a lot about the similarities between the 2014-15 bear market and the 2018-19 bear market. I was talking about how, for example, Bitcoin retraced about 85% from all-time high here. We saw Bitcoin ran up to $1,200 or so and retraced back down to around $160. It was about an 85% retracement. And if Bitcoin does hold $3,000, then we would see the exact same thing play out, about an 85% retracement. 
Not only that, Bitcoin did have an analogous level of support right here at three thousand. Excuse me, at three hundred dollars, Bitcoin had a level of support here, and we broke below it, and we lost about fifty percent of our valuation, moving from around three hundred dollars to around one hundred and fifty to one hundred and sixty dollars. A similar thing has happened here, where Bitcoin had a level of support at six thousand dollars. We've crashed about 50% below down to support around $3,000 this time. If we were to look at the market structure and we were to look at the way the market grew and played out in 2014 and 15, and then we look at how it's played out recently, even with something like the 200 weekly moving average, we can see we got support on it back here in 2015, and we're currently getting support on it around $3,000. All of our technicals would say that if Bitcoin repeats history, that Bitcoin will stay above $3,000, continue to trade sideways for the next couple of months, probably on into the end of 2019, and then start a bull market. But if that were all it was, then we wouldn't be making an entire video on this because there is a good argument for Bitcoin going below $3,000. And that's the argument that I want to lay out in today's video. Because like I said, there's a very strong case for Bitcoin staying above $3,000. But we have to understand both the bullish and the bearish case so that we can use that information to ascertain exactly what the market is going to do and try to get a better feeling for which direction the market is going to move and how far it's going to move so that we can accurately place our trades and our stop losses. With that said, why is there a good chance that Bitcoin may actually end up going below $3,000? Well, there's a couple of different reasons. There's a couple of different scenarios that might play out that I'm going to talk about, and there's a couple of different reasons that we're going to talk about. One of the scenarios that plays out is that if Bitcoin in this falling wedge does not break bullish and instead breaks bearish, this is a rather long-term falling wedge. It's been going on since basic, uh, since actually last year, back over here in the early, or since uh, the late part of December, excuse me. This is over a month in the making, and if Bitcoin breaks bearish out of this, it's very likely this going to drive Bitcoin all the way down here to $3,000. And when you go down and you test a level of support and or resistance, then you give it a chance of being broken. So that's one scenario. It's not necessarily the most extravagant, flashy piece of technical analysis in the world. But if Bitcoin does break bearish out of this, it's going to come down. It's going to test $3,000. And if it tests $3,000, that's a very bad thing. I'll tell you why that that's a very bad thing. Because if Bitcoin does come down and test $3,000, then what that means, that means that Bitcoin has broken below the 200 weekly simple moving average right here. Because if Bitcoin comes down here and breaks that, then we're going to see that Bitcoin has to break this moving average. Now, Bitcoin might not have to go very far below it. Bitcoin may only go a couple hundred dollars below it. But if it comes down to $3,000, it's going to break this support level, this moving average, weaken it, and give the bears some exuberance. Because I guarantee you a lot of the bears, the retail investors, and especially the institutional investors are looking at this 200 weekly moving average. It's a very powerful moving average on Bitcoin and on something like the S&P 500. As you can see, the stock market has recently bounced off of it as well. It's an important moving average to look at. If Bitcoin goes down to $3,000, it's going to do so by first breaking one of the most important support levels that it has. And if Bitcoin does break bearish out of this consolidation pattern that it's currently in, then it's going to break below that 200 weekly moving average. Because if we were to draw that weekly moving average here on the hourly chart, it's somewhere around like right there. We're not very far above it. We don't have a lot of wiggle room. So watch out for that. That's something that you need to be aware of. The next and more important thing even that you might want to thing that you might want to be aware of does not have to do with a short term break below $3000 but a slightly longer term break below $3000. And we're going to be talking about this scenario more in a future video where we talk about what a potential stock market crash and an imminent global financial crisis and recession uh, what, what that might do to the Bitcoin market. But in today's video, I want to talk about the possibility of the stock market crashing and what that may do to Bitcoin and how that may affect $3,000. Because of course, if Bitcoin breaks $3,000, if you go back and you watch yesterday's video, that throws all of the market structure out the window and then we go into really uncharted territory and we'll have to completely restart our technical analysis from there if Bitcoin does break $3,000. Because like I said, all of our historical precedent would be invalid. If the stock market does start going down, as we can see, the stock market has had a very major crash. We lost about 20% of our valuation here in the S&P 500. We saw that the stock market retraced 20%. And a lot of times people say that when the stock market retraces over 20%, that's the beginning of a bear market. And a lot of times that just so happens to line up with the moving average that we're rather familiar with, the 200 weekly moving average. Because if we turn our moving averages on here, we can see that a 20% retracement on the S&P 500, one of the largest stock indexes on the U.S. stock markets, that coincides with this 200 weekly moving average. So my point here is that even though the stock market has a, had a very strong bounce, there are a lot of problems in the U.S. financial markets, in global financial markets, in the U.S. stock markets, in global stock markets, in real estate markets, the Fed interest rates, uh, global interest rates. There's a lot of problems brewing under the surface that I don't have time to talk about in today's video. 
but there is a good chance that we're probably going to be entering some kind of financial crisis over the next 12 months. And whether or not that's going to be a good thing for Bitcoin is yet to be determined. Because what you must understand is that Bitcoin is only 10 years old. It's 10 years, a month, and a day old, actually. The first block was mined on January 3rd, 2009. And if we draw a line over here, January 3rd, 2009 was right around uh, right around there. So as we can see, Bitcoin has only existed in a state of bullishness for the U.S. stock markets. So if the U.S. stock markets go into a bear market, then we don't know yet what that's going to do to Bitcoin. I personally think that there's a decent chance that it's actually going to be a good thing for Bitcoin and that people are going to hedge their investments and move their money out of the stock market into Bitcoin. But we don't know that because it's never happened. We have no idea what exactly is going to happen there. And if the stock markets do start to crash, the global economy starts to slow down and we move into a global recession, that could be very bad for Bitcoin and that could bit drive Bitcoin below $3,000. And like I said earlier, reset all our technicals, throw our technical analysis out the window and potentially even extend the bear market by six months to a year. This is major. You guys want to be watching the stock markets because they are intrinsically tied to the Bitcoin markets. They are inseparable at this point. Bitcoin has gotten so large. It's not as big as it was in 2017, of course, but the stock markets and the Bitcoin markets are, in fact, correlated. They're not. It's not a very strong correlation, don't get me wrong, but it is enough that if Bitcoin, or excuse me, that if the stock markets do crash, it could have a very bad impact on Bitcoin. Like I've said in today's video, there's several different things that could drive Bitcoin below $3,000. A couple of the scenarios I just laid out, Bitcoin breaking the 200 weekly moving average would be catastrophic for Bitcoin. We've never seen Bitcoin go below this moving average in its entire history. We're looking at the Brave New Coin Liquid Index for Bitcoin. This is the oldest chart for Bitcoin that you can find, if I'm not mistaken. This does go back all the way to July of 2010. We're only missing about a year of price action, and that price action was honestly more or less irrelevant, to be totally honest. But the fact here is, is that this is one of the oldest charts on Bitcoin, and on this chart, chart, Bitcoin has never in its history gone below the 200 weekly moving average. If Bitcoin goes below the 200 weekly moving average, $3,000 is likely to be next. And we don't yet know what will happen if Bitcoin does that, because like I said earlier, that would be a break in long-term market structure. And we'd really be moving into uncharted territory from there. Anyway, guys, tell me in the comment section down below what you think of that technical analysis. Do you think that Bitcoin is going to go below $3,000? Do you think that Bitcoin is going to go below the 200 weekly moving average? And do you think that the U.S. stock markets are going to crash? And if you do, what do you think that'll do to Bitcoin? We're going to be doing a video on that relatively soon, talking about what a potential U.S. stock market crash could do to the Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency markets and the blockchain industry. Anyway, guys, I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did enjoy today's video, definitely consider dropping a like and hitting that subscribe button. Like I said, it does help out the channel immensely when you do that, and I would be very appreciative if you did. But anyway, guys, that is basically going to do it for today's video. Let's get a conversation going in the description, in the comments down below. Only I can edit the description in the comment section down below. I do read every single comment. Sometimes I don't have time to reply to all of them. I've been very busy lately. But anyway, I am now well and truly rambling. I do want to thank each and every single one of you for watching as always. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.